Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at ChainTUTS.com. Today we're going to be taking a technical look at an interesting problem that some users in the cryptocurrency space have faced since the hard fork uh, in 2017 created Bitcoin Cash as an alternative to the original Bitcoin chain. And this is the question of what happens if I accidentally send my Bitcoin Cash to a Bitcoin address or vice versa. So fortunately there are some solutions to this problem and it's not quite uh, what it might seem in the first place. And we're going to take a little bit of a more in-depth look uh, that will help us understand the Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash private keys and addresses and what you can do if this a mistake has happened to you. So first, we need to take a deeper look at the address space that both Bitcoin BTC and Bitcoin Cash BCH use uh, for their addresses. So it's important to know that Bitcoin BTC and Bitcoin Cash BCH use the exact same address space. That means all of the possible addresses that can exist um, more so in terms of private keys and public keys because there's other factors like the uh, version number that's appended to the front of the address. I should say prepended to the front of the address. So Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash private keys are generated as a random number between 0 and 2 to the 256th power. So this is a really, really giant space of possible private keys. Uh, the chances of two wallets generating the same private key for an address are nearly impossible, as this number is actually thought to be bigger than the number of atoms in the observable uni uh, universe. It's an unfathomably large number of possible private keys for either of these cryptocurrencies. So we have this random 256-bit number as our private key, and then the public key is derived using elliptic curve uh, cryptography algorithms, specifically SECP256K1 in the case of Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. So then a version number, an address version number, is prepended to the front of the address, uh, or the public key I should say, and then the version number and public key combination are hashed so that uh, part of that hash can be added as a checksum to the end of the address. These uh, addresses are then encoded traditionally in what's called base 58 check encoding. So that includes the version number, the public key, and then the checksum added to the end of the address encoded in a format that uses 58 characters. Uh, so it definitely shortens how big the address is visually uh, and you know when you deal with typing it in and that sort of thing. So those are the traditional Bitcoin and legacy Bitcoin Cash addresses. So again, I want to hammer home the point that both of these currencies use the same address space and the exact same algorithms for taking uh, a private key that is randomly generated and turning it into a public key that's used for managing um, the scripts that control who owns what on the blockchain. So let's look at a concrete example. And this is sort of the simplest and easiest to fix case if you do uh, an accidental cross-chain transaction. So let's say we have a user that has some Bitcoin Cash and they want to send it from maybe their mobile phone wallet or uh, an exchange where they purchase this Bitcoin Cash to a, another wallet where they control ownership of the funds. So they have the private keys. Uh, so let's just say for an example, this person bought Bitcoin Cash on Coinbase, which is something that I do all the time, and they want to send it to another wallet where they control the keys, like a wallet on their mobile phone. So this user goes to their wallet app, and they accidentally copy over an address that is from their Bitcoin BTC wallet. It's possible that this confusion could happen. Maybe the user has a different window open or they're using a multi-asset wallet uh, that includes Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin, which is fairly common since they're both uh, pretty similar in terms of uh, supporting uh, the wallet technology. So this person creates a Bitcoin Cash transaction 
but the destination address is one that is from their Bitcoin BTC wallet. So since this Bitcoin BTC address is completely valid on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain, this transaction is created and processed, but it's only processed on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. It's not actually possible unless you're using an exchange to send Bitcoin Cash directly to another blockchain because it's a completely different system and completely different network. So this address was from a Bitcoin BTC wallet. However, the transaction itself is only processed on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. So now the address uh, is storing those funds, now owns those funds on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. Well, fortunately, given that these private key and address and public key address derivation processes are the exact same on both currencies, the same private key from that Bitcoin BTC wallet controls and owns the funds on the BT, uh, BCH Bitcoin Cash blockchain. So all the user needs to do is export the private key for that Bitcoin address and import that into their Bitcoin Cash wallet. So they actually already have the private key that controls ownership of those funds. They just need to import it into their wallet software so the wallet actually recognizes that as part of the user's balance. So again, that's a fairly simple case. There are some pitfalls that can make it much more difficult to recover those funds. So the first case would be if you send uh, Bitcoin Cash to a Bitcoin to another Bitcoin user and you accidentally copy their Bitcoin address. Well now again you've actually sent and processed that transaction on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. So if that other user doesn't really want Bitcoin Cash, you're gonna have to guide them through the process of exporting their BTC key, importing it into a Bitcoin Cash wallet, and then hopefully sending you back those funds because they're a good person and they don't want to steal your money. But this could get a lot more complicated if you're sending to an address owned by an exchange, for example, because it might be a lot harder for them to manually export that address than they have to credit your Bitcoin Cash account. And uh, some exchanges have dealt with this pretty well in the past, but you're relying on an entire other party to handle this problem for you and hopefully be willing to give you the time to remedy uh, the mistake that you made. Another much more serious problem is that uh, Bitcoin, right around the time that the Bitcoin Cash fork happened, started supporting what are called segregated witness transactions and segregated witness addresses. Bitcoin Cash developers made the decision to not support this SegWit technology on their chain. So if you copy over a Bitcoin BTC SegWit address and try to send a transaction to it on the BCH blockchain, it becomes nearly impossible to unlock those funds because that transaction type and that address type aren't really supported by Bitcoin Cash. Um, I have heard doing some more reading about this that um, modern uh, Bitcoin Cash wallets and the software protocol may actually not allow these transactions to go through, but I definitely have heard about this happening in the past where a Bitcoin Cash user sent their Bitcoin Cash funds to a BTC SegWit address and then the funds were simply locked in there on the BCH chain, uh, which could be very problematic. It means those funds are effectively lost and you just sent your money sort of off into the ether. Now, fortunately, the developers in the Bitcoin Cash space, um, the lead developer of uh, Bitcoin ABC, I believe, implemented a new address format specifically for Bitcoin Cash only, and it's called Cash Adder. So instead of Base58, it uses a uh, Base32 format, and uh, it just makes the addresses visually look completely different. So if you copy and paste a Bitcoin Cash address into a Bitcoin client, it's not even going to allow you to send, to create a transaction, send funds there because it's not going to recognize that address format. And if you're a Bitcoin Cash user and you accidentally see a Bitcoin legacy address, you're probably going to think twice before you accidentally paste that address in and create a transaction because now most people in the Bitcoin Cash ecosystem are using this Cash Adder format. 
Um, I've made sure to switch uh, my wallets and my uh, usage of Bitcoin Cash addresses over to Cash Adder to um, make sure that I'm supporting this development. And uh, so it's much harder just to make this mistake at all now. It takes some of the human error out of the equation. So again, this has been a little bit of a deeper dive into how Bitcoin and uh, Bitcoin Cash private keys and addresses are sort of the same. And therefore, how you can kind of understand what happens if you accidentally use the wrong address and create a transaction and what you can do if you have this problem. So as always, there's a text article that accompanies this video on the Chain Tutorials website. I hope you found this video interesting and informative, and thank you very much for watching.